We're joined now by the deputy campaign manager for the Biden campaign, Kate Bedingfield. Kate, thank you for joining us this morning. I want to start out with that tweet from the president where he suggested that there are those in the FDA trying to hold up the approval process until after November 3rd. You just heard Mr. Meadows say there are, and there are a number of people at the FDA who do not share the same sense of urgency as the president. Your response? Look, the American people need to be confident that the process of getting to a vaccine is not being uh, politically manipulated. And right now, we're not getting a whole lot of reason to believe that. You know, unfortunately, this is consistent with the way the president has approached this crisis from the beginning. He, you know, started out uh, saying the virus will magically disappear. He has made the response to a, an almost unprecedented public health crisis in this country political. He has used every uh, opportunity to undermine faith in the public health uh, officials who should be driving his response to this crisis. Uh, and he's, you know, he's used the opportunity to, uh, you know, to go on TV, turn it into a press conference uh, to, you know, to tout his own uh, political success. And so I think as Americans are obviously eagerly awaiting uh, a vaccine, they need to feel confident that the process is not being politically manipulated. And they also need to feel confident that the president is going to be able to, and that this administration is going to be able to get a vaccine equitably and quickly to people all across the country. That is a massive logistical undertaking. It requires planning. It requires organization. It requires execution. And I don't think anybody has seen any evidence from this president or this government that they're going to be able to handle that kind of operation. So the American people need to have faith in their government that they're going to be able to handle this. And, and right now we're not getting a whole lot of it. Let me ask a separate question on COVID. On July 28th, uh, Joe Biden said he hadn't been tested for the coronavirus. But this week, your campaign refused to, on two occasions to answer the question of whether or not he had been tested. So can you clarify, has Joe Biden been tested for COVID? Has he had the virus? He has not had the virus. We have put in place really strict protocols, as I think um, all of your journalists who attended our convention in Delaware uh, this week saw. We've put in place incredibly strict protocols to ensure that everybody involved uh, who is around Vice President Biden, who's around Senator Harris, uh, is uh, undergoing uh, the appropriate testing. Um, the vice president has not had the virus. Um, and, has uh, he been tested? He has not, he has not been tested. Um, however, we have put the strictest protocols in place, and, uh, and moving forward, should he need to be tested, he certainly would be, uh, but he has not been tested yet. Okay. On, on the post office, we just heard Mr. Meadows say that he's willing to negotiate with Speaker Pelosi on more of a targeted bill uh, that where they can sign something where they can all agree on. A lot of House Democrats agree with that. They, they want more money for small business. They would like to expand some of the unemployment uh, funding as well. Is that something Vice President Biden would support? He would. He believes that we need to get uh, resources to the post office to ensure that uh, they can do their job. Obviously, um, you know, delivering ballots is one important piece of their work, but it is not all of their work. It's a fundamental service that gets uh, medicine and checks to people who need them all across the country. It's a vital service. Um, he also believes that we need to get uh, uh, money to people who are hurting now. You know, he is somebody who, as, pres uh, as president, would uh, be able to bring people together, would be able to get to, um, uh, to get to consensus when people are hurting and need action. That's something he's done his entire life. He has a career of having been able to bring people to the table to get things done. That's what people are looking for in a leader. They're not looking for somebody uh, uh, to stonewall, to sow division, which is what we see from Donald Trump and his approach to, frankly, almost everything. Um, so, uh, you know, as president, Joe Biden is somebody who would be able to bring people to the table uh, to get meaningful change done and to get relief to people who need it, to the small businesses who are hurting, to the working families who are hurting. You know, he very much views this crisis through the lens of how it is hurting real people every day. Uh, and as president, that would be the first thing at the front of his mind every morning when he woke up. We, we showed at the top of the program that our, our latest poll shows the vice president got a bounce in favorability coming out of the convention. But uh, President Trump still holds in most polls an advantage on the economy. How do you respond to the criticism that the Democrats did not do enough at their convention to focus on the meat and, pa meat and potatoes, working class economics? I think we did. I think you saw, I think, a, a real distinction between what you saw at our convention this past week and what I imagine you're going to see at the Republican convention next week, especially given the fact that we now know that uh, almost half the speakers who are speaking have the last name Trump, the convention next week, um, is you saw uh, real people talking about their experiences, talking about how Donald Trump's leadership has impacted their lives and why they believe that Joe Biden should be president. You've seen over the course of the summer, you've seen Joe Biden roll out a really comprehensive, really ambitious economic plan, his agenda to build back better 
including things like bringing supply chains back to uh, America so that we're making things here in America, including uh, uh, tax credits for, um, for child care, for caregivers, moves to shore up the caregiving economy and make sure that people who are working in these essential jobs uh, uh, have the support that they need and that families are able to, uh, to afford things like child care that are, are critical, are foundational um, to them being able to live their lives. So you I, think you've, I think you've heard a lot from Joe Biden uh, about exactly what he will do as president to build this country back better. But the, when you talk about those programs, Vice President Biden's longtime advisor, Ted Kaufman, suggested this week that a President Biden might not be able to make good on many of those campaign promises during a first term. Here's what he told The Wall Street Journal. I do not think it'd be a, a big increase in federal spending because I think basically the, when we get in that the, the pantry is going to be bare. I mean, this is going to be very difficult. This is going to be a very difficult uh, uh, administration. And one of the things are we're, we're going to have limited funds to do what we're going to do. That drew a very sharp response from Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Here's her tweet. She says, this is extremely concerning. The pantry is absolutely not bare. We need massive investment in our country or it will fall apart. So is the president, is, the, is Vice President Biden, does he agree with Mr. Kaufman there that he's not going to be able to make good on many of those promises because the pantry is bare? Well, the proof is in his proposals. I mean, he's put forward, again, incredibly ambitious uh, economic proposals to get people back to work, to, uh, to ensure that American families have the resources that they need um, to live their lives. So I think but if we you just take, heard if Mr. Take Kaufman a look, say he's not going to be able to make good on them. He has always, he has always believed in responsible governing. He's always believed in the importance of, of paying for what, you, for what you spend. But he also, I think you've heard him say throughout the course of this entire, uh, this entire summer, we are in a crisis moment in this country. This is a time to meet that moment, to put forward big ideas, to put forward ideas that are going to ensure that when we come out of this crisis, we're not just going back to the old normal, but we are, going, we are moving forward to a better, more equitable economy where working people are dealt into the deal and where everybody has an opportunity to be at the table. He's put forward really concrete, specific plans, um, which I would encourage anybody watching to go to JoeBiden.com and take a look at them, um, because I think they speak for themselves. And I think so he's uh, not going to scale them back as president. If he, he if he, he is not, if he is president, he is going to work to bring along uh, support to get those plans done and move our country forward, because he believes that's the right way, uh, the right way uh, to build back better. Kate Bedenfield, thanks for your time this morning. Thanks for having me. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.